back up a little bit and because I find often I don't know what I, as much as I think I know about really basic things. So can you give us a definition of heart disease? Yeah. What causes a heart attack and what is our goal in terms of having a healthy heart? Is it about valves or um, uh, elasticity or, or, or what, explain what we're aiming for also? Yeah, no, great questions. And I'm going to start at the end, almost like a movie that starts at the end and works its way backwards. <laughs> so the goal of any care of any healthcare provider is one of two things, to help a person feel better and live longer. That's it, right? Now, part of live longer in many instances, specifically as it relates to the heart, can mean trying to keep you from having a heart attack that falls under that bucket that's there. But those are very simple goals, how you feel symptoms and so forth, minimizing that, eliminating that, and then potentially preventing this catastrophic event called a heart attack. So now that's the goal. So let's take it back to the beginning. So what we know about heart disease, heart disease is nothing new. It's been known since the days of, of the, the pharaohs and studies have shown and demonstrated that, that we've identified this. And the best way I can describe it is that we're beautifully and wonderfully made and we have this intricate network of vessels Think of these vessels as water hoses. They're going and delivering blood all throughout the system and they arise from one singular pump called the heart. Now this heart is wonderful in that although it gives off these big, uh, these, these water, these garden hoses, these pipes, these rubber pipes that are there, it also feeds back to itself to deliver blood to the heart muscle. These pipes can get clogging inside of it, just like your pipes at home. And so you can have where you have that small, mild green corrosion that occurs <laughs> if from the hard water that's been there. Okay, well, it's not obstructed. We may say that you have a little bit of hardening of the vessels, like that hardening that happens there. We'll say, call that arterial sclerosis, which is hardening of the vessels. Another way to think of that is that if you have that pipe and it's inside the desert, this rubber hose, it's going to get hard if it's baking in the sunlight for a while and get stiff. So when your vessels get stiff, that's arteriosclerosis. Now, when those vessels become invaginated with like a creamy, rubbery type of substance, right? Think of it as if the kids or someone just stuffs a bunch of toilet tissue down the, the toilet or the pipes and the pipes get clogged, you get this area. Now you begin to have restriction of blood flow. And that's what we typically characterize as atherosclerosis, or we also call that coronary artery disease. Okay, so now, there's arterial sclerosis and atherosclerosis. Did I correct. pronounce? Okay, got that's it. I did perfect. not know that. I did not know the yeah. difference. Mm -hmm. So easy way to think of it is hardening of the vessel. The other one is an invagination of the lumen of the vessel that will begin to happen, or the wall right? The wall is probably being more specific. So within each of your arteries, you have I've never heard layers. of the word invagination, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so all right. So the, here's another way to think of it, right? There's a, a simple way. If you're drinking, let's say that you're having a smoothie, a fruit smoothie, and you decide to, or you're having boba. I don't do any of that boba stuff, but my, my kids, my daughter likes that boba stuff. And so they have these big, huge star, uh, straws with boba. And let's say you have a real small straw that you're drinking your fruit smoothie and there's a piece of fruit that isn't completely blended up. It'll get stuck in that straw. Mm -hmm. it, and so now as you're, as you're trying to, to extract the fluid, it's obstructing it. And so the same thing happens inside the lumen of your vessels is that you have a plaque that forms or you have an obstruction that forms this obstruction is typically comprised of inflammatory pros, uh, products that is where the cholesterol comes into, into play and it will build up over time. Is and that so, the toilet paper yes. that you mentioned? So that's Correct. cholesterol. What causes that hardening of the arteries that you talked about? What lifestyle changes? Because we'll talk about cholesterol. I, I have talked about it personally uh, because of my own cholesterol uh, on this show, but what causes the hardening? I think a lot of people don't know about that. So, uh, you know, it's, it typically is multifactorial. We'll see that in terms of the calcification of arteries that begins to happen. It can happen from persistent high blood pressure that's there and that's protracted, cholesterol too as well, diabetes. And so without getting too technical and, and scientific, all these processes work to have a combined impact on the vessel wall that also lead to hardening, but also lead to this obstruction that can occur. Okay. Now, and smoking a, and sugar do that too, the uh, specifically hardening, right? 
Correct. So, mm -hmm. so sugar has plays a role as far as in, in heart disease now, specifically to which pathway. We know that, that increased sugar consumption, especially added sugar, increased cardiovascular mortality or death. That's there. We, we know that there is an association that's there. There's several pathways that have been worked out as it relates to its increase in triglycerides and some of the fats in your system from excessive amounts. We know its role that it can play with diabetes too as well, not as a primary driver, but as a subsequent driver too as well. And all these things kind of work through a synergistic process that can impact the vessels. Now, the one thing that is scary, but also important to understand is most people, and if I were to ask you, would you say a heart attack is more likely to happen from an artery that's blocked 90%, 70%, or 40%, which would you say? Well, I know the answer because I did research and I was gonna ask you about stents. So, um, and I was reading Dr. Michael Greger. So he said 50%, mm -hmm. I think, is that so right? So we, yes, yeah, so we, the areas that are not obstructive, that we otherwise wouldn't do anything about, areas that are 20, 30, 40, 50% are the areas that are more likely to result in heart attacks than what we colloquially think, 70, 80, 90%. I have patients all the time saying, doc, it was a heart attack waiting to happen. I said, no, not necessarily, right? It's the other areas. Now you say, well, why is that? Yeah, why is that? That's totally counterintuitive. Yeah, so what ends up happening I'll tell you first the answer and then I'll give you the analogy if it doesn't quite make sense. It's the fact that um, when it's chronically building over time, slowly but progressively building, we, it's like a mound that's there. And that mound gets a thick cap, it's very hard, and it just continually increases. As opposed to think of it like a pimple area for like a small kid and so forth that's there, a young child. And so these little pimples, well, they can be fragile, they can get irritated really easily. And if they get exposed and they pop, like, you know, the kids, then what happens? The content comes out. Uh -huh. So in the, in the artery, you have these pimple bump-like areas that are not very occlusive. But if they're fragile, get irritated, they release their contents, which is like a pus-like, a pustular type of content that's inflamed. Your body goes into overdrive to heal that area with clot formation. And that will lead to obstruction of the vessel. And that's more likely to happen than one that's built up very slowly and with a thick cap over time. Okay, so, and is that, um, the, the pus analogy, is that cholesterol or what is that? Yes. Ah, that's, okay. that's, a, that's a mixture of the, all the inflammatory cytokines the, that then lead to the cholesterol, they, they melt the cholesterol and lead to the atherosclerosis, yes.